Hi, what's up everyone? Welcome to today's video. We are back in Tachikawa and in case you don't know, this is part two of our Tachikawa adventure. The store was so big, I wanted to split it up into two parts. This is the final part. So before we start, thank you guys so much for watching my previous video. It's a iceberg video where I go into all kinds of games that did not leave Japan. So far, I tried something new and you guys have been responding very positive to all of it. So thank you guys so much for watching that and let's continue to the video. And welcome back to part two of my Tachikawa adventure. We're gonna dive right into the N64 section. Super excited about it. Look at all those covers. Look at all those boxes. I can't wait to get them all. Maybe not today, but at one point. So we're starting off with 007 Goldeneye. Kind of an uncommon game in Japan. It's, it's always on the high side of the price. And look at that. You're actually watching the game running on an emulator called 1964. And I just wanted to shed some light on this. You see, with some tweaks and bells and whistles to the emulator, you can actually run this game in full 1080p and 60 frames per second. And the best part, you can play this with keyboard and mouse. Not just remapped N64 controls, just WSAD pure good old FPS controls. And what an experience that is. I tell you, this is something you absolutely have to try. It's just as if 007 came out on the PC back in the day. And I actually beat the whole game like this. Like, <laughs> this is so much fun. I got caught up all weekend playing this. I can't recommend this enough. Give it a try and let's move on to some of the other N64 games. The Japanese exclusive Custom Robo V2. Always a good time. I covered this in my previous video, so be sure to give that a watch, as well as F-Zero X. Speaking of 60 frames per second on the N64, then there's good old Excite Bike 64. Really cool box art in Japan. And the ever so expensive Castlevania 64, here for 4,000 yen, which is actually a good price. Then they had a bunch of these Mario Kart 64s for 4,000 yen. I thought these were a pretty good deal. It's pretty fun seeing them all lined up like that. Then Super Robot Wars 64, a Gundam type strategy game. Not my cup of tea, but fun to find. And next to it, we've got Super Robot Spirits of the same franchise, but this time it's a fighting game. And this one also looks really slow, I don't know. Here's one usually found in junk corners or bargain bins, the Tamagotchi World for the N64. Still have to give this one a try. Then here's an interesting one, Disney's Dance Dance Revolution. There is a mat, but I swear I've never seen this thing in person. I always find the game, never find the mat. And another Animal Forest. Be sure to check out my Iceberg video. It's the one before this one and I can't recommend it enough. It was really fun to make. And I kind of go into the history of Animal Crossing. Puyo Puyo Sun. I'd rather play this one on the Saturn, but here it is for the N64 as well. And Bokujo Monogatari 2. Harvest Moon on the N64. Really, really fun version of this game. Human Grand Prix. I'll do a video on every racing game for the N64 one day. This one looks fun, haven't played it. Then we have Perfect Dark, the classic, another expensive one for the Japanese N64. But again, the power of emulation comes into play. 60 FPS, full screen and WSAD keyboard and mouse action. Look at that, looks great. I haven't played all the way through this one yet. I will at some point because it, it just they're just really good games. I can't stress that enough. I do have to mention with WSAD, it makes the game a bit easier. I guess the difficulty comes from the N64 controller, but still definitely worth uh, at least one playthrough like this. Then hidden at the bottom shelf, Banjo-Kazooie, another fun N64 classic and not too expensive in Japan. And here's a recommended Mahjong game for the N64, Django Simulation. The tiles are actually 3D rendered. 
So this next one isn't Pokemon Stadium 1 or 2, it's the Japanese exclusive version of Gold and Silver Pokemon Stadium, and it's actually a fun little third installment to it. Banjo Tooie, can't go wrong with Banjo Tooie, right? If you want to follow the story, the English version might be better, but this one is definitely cheaper. Then another 60 FPS classic, if you want it to be at least, Doom 64. It's crazy how good this version of Doom is. It's its own thing, it's on the N64, and it absolutely sucked back in the day with the N64's blurry resolution and its low frame rates, but here we are. Turns out when this game is played at a playable frame rate and resolution, it's actually really good. It's really fun. Look at that, it's Doom 64. Highly recommended, maybe not the original one, but that is the beauty of playing retro games in this day and age, where a lot of these games came up short due to the graphical or hardware limitations we now get to actually enjoy them as what I presume to be how the developers intended it. So yeah, absolutely recommend giving this one a try. Then hidden within the N64 games, it's a Super Famicom game, Daikaiju Monogatari. Really like this one, there's a fan translation available and it's just good old Super Famicom RPG. Then back to racing games on the N64, Choro Q. This one is uh, fun, small cars, big tracks. It's actually the sequel, but good series. Then Densha to Go 64, the train simulator. Actually one of my favorite Japanese exclusive games ever. And it has a special controller. Now this one is interesting. Virtual Pro Wrestling for the N64 and it's actually WCW NWO Revenge that we got in the West. It's the same engine, it's almost the same game. But this one has like a bunch of Japanese characters as well as WCW and NWO characters. For 3000 yen that's actually a good price. I don't see this one that often. And if you're a fan of the N64 wrestling games, this is kind of where it all came from, so absolutely recommend this one. Speaking of 2D, let's move over to the Super Famicom section. Again, a massive collection of games, starting with The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. When I do these videos, I try to focus on the more obscure and games that you just don't really find in the West as much, but it's also really good to just go back to the classics once in a while. I'm playing Breath of the Wild right now, and it's really fun to see where all of this stuff came from, where it all started, and it's just Zelda, man. It's Zelda. It's so, so good. Then there's the Super Nintendo exclusive Super Wagyan Land, and its sequel, Super Wagyan Land 2. It's like a platformer, but it has little quiz sections in between. Then this one was new to me, Super Sumo Heat War Tai Ichiban. It, uh, it looks interesting. I'm not a big sumo fan, but it's definitely a game I would like to give a try someday. And Super Adventure Island, a bit pricey, 4,000 yen, but always a fun time to find it. Ryuki Heidan Danzarb, and I've never seen this much text in a Super Nintendo game. Pop and Twinbee, Rainbow Bell Adventures, the platformer variant of the fun Pop and Twinbee series. And a racing game I did not know, Top Racer, gonna try this one out, it looks fun. Then the ultra difficult Super Ghouls and Ghosts for the Super Nintendo, one of the better ports, but damn. Mutant Warriors, a fighting game in the Ninja Turtles franchise, it looks fun, I think this is an exclusive, but I'm not sure. Then this one is an exclusive, Bahamut Lagoon, a RPG for the Super Nintendo and one I have yet to try, but that cover art is something. Definitely one for the backlog. Then there's some pachinko games, Parlor Mini 3, haven't tried this one, but for 800 yen, maybe I should have picked this one up. Same with Kyoraku Sanyo Toyomaru Parlor Parlor for 590, these are pretty cheap and I would like to try them. Then here's one you don't run into every day, Heisei Shin Onigashima Kohen. This is actually a sequel to Shin Onigashima on the disc system. And this is one of those games that I would heavily, heavily recommend to language learners. If you're into learning Japanese and you're a bit more intermediate, this game is a retelling of old Japanese fairy tales and it does so in a completely text-based environment. Think of it as a mix of old school text-based games and a choose your own adventure style book where you can get to choose to go north choose to go west and then things happen the story unfolds it's interesting to say the least the disc system version is a bit harder to find this one was actually released for the Satellaview but it was popular enough that it got a re-release so yeah the music is good people always ask me what's a good game to learn Japanese with and if you're not a beginner this would definitely be one of those 
Then next to it we have Flashback. This is really cool. This is an expensive game. It's really good. Lots of good high quality animations and it's just on the shelf here. Then we have a lot of these Sailor Moon games. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a big Sailor Moon fan so I don't know a lot about these games. But the franchise is akin to Dragon Ball Z where there's a bunch of different types of games. This is a puzzle game, it looks really fun. But most people grew up with this next one, which is also a puzzle game. This one was really really famous and a lot of people have a lot of good fond memories of this. But there's also a lot of really good beat em ups like this one, Bisujo Senshi Sailor Moon, which is just the name of this series. And as a fan of beat em ups, I can definitely see myself trying some of these out. I might make a whole video on them because they seem pretty interesting. For some reason, I never knew this existed. I love the Capcom games, I love the Disney games on the Super Nintendo. This one's actually made by Hudson, so maybe that's why, but. Beauty and the Beast on the Super Nintendo. Definitely gonna give this a try. I'm a big fan of Aladdin, Lion King, and all the good ones that we had, but I've just never heard of this one. Then, based on the arcade game from the same name, Jalico Big Rally Big Run The Supreme 4WD Challenge. A really fun rally game. I wanna try this one. From what I can tell, it looks like a outrun type game, but then there's a whole rally aspect and travel around the world and different terrains. Yeah, it's it's definitely something I want to try. The arcade version looks really good as well. So at least on the graphical side of things, this looks to be a surprisingly good port. Then Pop and Twinbee, always good to find affordable shoot 'em up games on the Super Famicom. I really like the Twinbee series where you shoot the bell for power-ups. This was super surprising to find. So Retrobit made these 16-bit collections in recent years and here's one specifically made for Japan with the Kiwami Mahjong games in it. And what do you include after putting in four Mahjong games? You put the shoot 'em up bio metal because that's a perfect fit for a retro game collection. Super weird. I didn't know they made these in Japan, but apparently these are pretty popular and now they're starting to pop up at stores like this. Then Lemmings, a very fond memory on MS-DOS and apparently also on the Super Nintendo. Then always fun to find Mega Man X or Rockman X as it's known here in Japan. I kind of prefer it to the original Mega Man series but that's definitely a matter of taste. I couldn't see the price on this one but considering Mega Man X, the original one here was 7,000 yen, I'm gonna assume that I could not afford it. <laughs> Then another wrestling game, Kinikuman Dirty Challenger. It's more of a wrestling game slash fighting game hybrid since it's got the 2D perspective. But the finishers are really, really cool. Look at that, the full screen animations really sell this one. Hoppa, needed a face. If you're a fan of the anime or manga, this is definitely a must play. Look at that, pep, backbreaker, whatever, takedown animation. <laughs> Man, this is, a, this is a fun game. Play this one on a Friday night. Order some pizza, get some beer, and play some Dirty Challenger Kinikuman. Definitely, definitely try to get all these animations. <laughs> Then NBA Pro Basketball Bulls vs Blazers on the Super Nintendo. I don't know, it's not NBA Jam, so hey. Eh. Gradius 3 on the Super Nintendo, a great port of the arcade game. Very, very difficult, but definitely worth to try. All three of the Gambare Goemon series on the Super Famicom. Really cool, Gambare Goemon 1. This is number 2 right here. They do kind of get better, in my opinion, as you play them. My favorite being the second one but the third one and the first one are also must-tries. Caravan Shooting Collection. I guess that's how they call shoot 'em up games over here in Japan. It would be the same as how some people call beat 'em ups belt action games, since it looks like the enemies are coming at you at like a conveyor belt, I don't know. But yeah, Caravan Shooting Collection, containing three games, Star Force, Star Soldier, and Hector 87. All three worth it to get on the Famicom in their own right, but here you can get them as a bundle. Really cool little packaging as well. I love the team on the back of the box. So yeah, love me some shoot 'em up games. Really good little package here. If you can't be bothered to find all of these on the Famicom. Super common, all three of them by the way. Here they are, all three on a neat little cartridge. Moving on to the classic Act Razor. I keep confusing this with another game, but they actually do have it in Japan. And it's under the same name, Act Razor. 
proving once more what a beast the Super Famicom games in terms of so many games and varieties. Cardmaster, another unknown game to me. Then for 9,000 yen, this game is known to me, Valken, Assault Suits Valken, really really cool little run and gun mech game. And for 280 yen, a Pachi Slot, Pachi Slot is just slot machines in Japan. And here's uh, Jisen Pachi Slot, Hishoho, okay. Then another entry to 4 ems Never Growing Backlog, Bounty Sword, another RPG for the Super Famicom, and Super R-Type, one of the only shoot'em ups that I've ever beaten that wasn't on free play mode. Then tucked away on this bottom shelf, we have a couple of Fire Pro Wrestling games, the Isometric Pro Wrestling series. Let's go through them. Starting off with Fire Pro Wrestling X Premium. This one's really cool. Being one of the later ones, it took care of a lot of the bugs and added some more features to it. And the roster on these games is kind of insane. This one has Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, Bret Hart, and the game is really known for its top-notch mechanics. Moving on, there's Super Fire Pro Wrestling 2 and Super Fire Pro Wrestling 3. Like, these are all cool, they're still Super Fire Pro Wrestling games, so I recommend you give them all a try. But this last one, Super Fire Pro Wrestling Special, this is one that's kind of notorious. Justin Wang did a video about it a couple of years ago. See, this game has a very deep story mode where you follow a wrestler's career, kind of like the modern WWE games. And for a wrestling game of this era, it's kind of deep. It's really cool. You start in this basement and you get a coach and you kind of just follow the paths of a pro wrestler. Now, the story itself is what sets this game apart. It's super insane. It ends with like Ric Flair and there's betrayals and it's got like all of these twists and turns that just have no reason to be this dark. I'm not going to spoil it. You can watch Justin Wang's video on it. I'll link it in the description. But yeah, this is definitely one you have to try. <laughs> Then if the other sections were that big, let's see what the Game Boy section has to offer. There's also Game Boy Advance, and we're starting off with Kuru Kururin. This is a really good little puzzle-ish type platformer. You move the rotating thing through the maze and you try not to touch the walls. Really cool, definitely one to load into your analog pocket. Then the Shinchan game, Arashi no Yobu Cinema. I don't know, the Shinchan games are always cozy. And Super Mario Advanced 4, the remake of Super Mario Bros. 3. Yeah, it's good. Mario on a handheld. According to a certain Iceberg video, this is the first time Fire Emblem was released in the West on the GBA. Naruto Kinoha Senki, one of the few Naruto games that's not a fighting game. And the classic Pokemon Sapphire. Fun fact, I've never played this generation of Pokemon. Mother 1 and 2. I really like these versions. Apparently the sound is kind of broken, but there's patches that fix that and these are really good versions of the game. Koro Koro Puzzle. This one is a puzzle game where you move the Game Boy and then the th things inside move as well. It has a sensor inside the cartridge and it's pretty cool for the time. Pokemon Pinball, Ruby and Sapphire. This one seems to get more expensive every time I see it, which is unfortunate because I am looking for it. Then over here we have a, a long line of Final Fantasy games for the Game Boy Advance. Up until not that long ago, this was, in my opinion, the definitive version to play these old Final Fantasy games. They were really good. There's patches for the sound because the sound was kind of butchered, as is common with Game Boy Advance ports. But with the recent Pixel Remastered versions of these games, I think those definitely get the title of definitive version. But yeah, for your analog pocket, these definitely are a great addition. One Piece Going Baseball. It's exactly how it sounds. It's One Piece, it's baseball. A Game Boy game, Shin-chan. I'm friends with Shiro. Don't know about this one, but it looks cozy. And my favorite thing, and I know I have a lot of favorite things, Parodius Da, a shoot 'em up for the Game Boy. Expensive, but really, really good. This is a Zelda game you don't really hear a lot about, and it's it's graphically really impressive. It's Oracle of Ages and Oracles of Seasons on the Game Boy Color. These next two games, Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3, and Super Mario Land 2, besides that they're the games that I grew up with on my Game Boy, they're another great example of games that are just a really good reason to be a retro gamer in 2023. 
See, the footage that you're watching is the DX version. And while these are unofficial versions, it's really, really cool. So what they did is they took Mario's color palette and added it to the original Game Boy game, making it just straight up look like a Game Boy Color game. And it, it looks so cool. It's a really great way to relive these games if you haven't played them in a while. And especially if you have a analog pocket or a modded Game Boy with an IPS screen, this would really be a great way to relive these games. Another game I didn't know was on a Game Boy, Popeye. I like the Famicom version, it's a classic. This one, I'm not sure what it is. It looks fun, I'll give it a shot. Then another game by Mr. Miyamoto, the guy who created Mario, Mole Mania, on the Game Boy. Still looking for a cheap version of this one. And here's Little Master, a full-on RPG on the Game Boy. Really cool to have these existed, especially for what the Game Boy was capable of back in the day, being a little handheld. 8-bit dot matrix little console really cool that these existed and then Mega Man X or Rockman X for the Game Boy Color this is a fun little port it's not the best but for a Game Boy game hey eh? here's One Piece Yumi no Luffy Kazokudan Tanjo this one has a very Pokemon feel to it if you're a fan of One Piece I recommend trying it in the spirit of Jump Comics Dragon Ball Z Goku Geki Toden a very weird little strategy fighting game now moving on, we've got some accessories in this case, the backup memory card for the PCFX and a Frogger LCD game, pretty cool. Not minding my reflection over there, they had quite a big selection of boxed consoles. Over here we have a Neo Geo Mini, I heard good things about this, and a PC NJ Core Graphics and CD-ROM 2, really cool to find these. Some N64s over here. And the new Famicom, aka the Top Loader. Then this is Arino Cacho. If you guys don't know what Game Center CX is, you gotta stop right now and go binge all of their first seasons. This guy literally was the first to ever do it. He played video games on TV in Japan and he became a huge personality. And he also is just a massive inspiration to this entire channel. It's time to go explore the PC Engine section. There's a lot of CDs, but there's also some cue cards over here. Starting with R-Type. R-Type, a really good port for the PC Engine. I think I prefer this one over the Super Nintendo. Then the first two books of Ease. And here we have Urusei Yatsura Stay With You. You're gonna see this a lot with these PC Engine CD games. There's just a lot of video. There's a lot of visual novels. And this being kind of a new thing at the time, it's very experimental. I like a lot of these games, but they might not be everyone's cup of tea. So like the gameplay just gets really broken down by all of these cutscenes and it might be distracting for some people, especially if you're just not into anime. So here's Valis 3. Someone said on one of my previous videos that the Valis series doesn't get a lot of attention and is very heavily slept on. Well, not anymore. It was slept on by me, but I started researching it and it looks like a really, really cool series. This one, of course, having a lot of anime cutscenes, which I prefer to the Sega Saturn versions because the Sega Saturn has this weird video codec, which makes it look blocky. But here on the PC Engine, they look nice and crispy, like old school pixel art style games. It's, it's really cool. Then we have the pinball game Alien Crush with a really good CD quality soundtrack. Cyber Knight, the RPG set in space. Same as Starbreaker, another RPG, cutscene heavy, really interesting setting. Then Zero Four Champ 2, you might think this is a racing game. And so did I, they really got me there. It's more of a racing driver simulation game. But as far as the actual racing goes, it's there's not a lot of that, but more like management type situations. It's interesting, but it's not the racing game I hoped it would be. Hyperdyne Sidearm Special, a great little shoot 'em up. You're a mech and you're flying through space. Can't really go wrong. 2000 yen. Shoot 'em up on the PC engine. Yep, gather here. Then here is Darius Plus, a great port of the arcade game. 
Neketsu High School Dodgeball Soccer Edition. And I'm not sure what's going on here. It's called Dodgeball, but the gameplay is mostly soccer. I'll have to look into this one. Here's some cool box art. Seiryu Densetsu Mombit. A little RPG adventure type game. Another MS-DOS classic from my childhood, Prince of Persia, but this version looks really nice. It looks very enhanced as to what I was used to. Really refreshing to find Fantasy Zone here, a normal Hue card game for the PC Engine. And I think this is a really good port. It doesn't beat the Saturn port in terms of graphics, but it's, it's good. I like this one. Then for the expensive section, Hot-Blooded Family for the Sega Saturn, a beat-em-up and three dirty dwarves. Now, immediately you can see why a game like this would be expensive. It looks good, it looks like it's great to play, and it's probably pretty rare. Now, the cutscenes suffer from that low-quality video codec syndrome that I was talking about before, but that doesn't take away from the quality of the rest of the game. Look at this, this looks like an indie game that would be produced today, just in a lower resolution. Gonna definitely try this one out. Here's the classic Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. And this was surprising, they had a really really big and intricate section for the MSX, so let's go through it, starting off with 10 yard fight in this big box version. Now disclaimer, I know nothing about the MSX, but it seemed to be a pretty popular home computer for the time. With games like Mouser, this just screams 80s home computer game, doesn't it? Here's some loose games in these ROM packs, this is Antarctic Adventure, pretty interesting and Star Command, Exciting Jockey, and Ski Command, where you ski and shoot a gun. Now it's also fun to see how a store like this acquires some of their games. These are bounties essentially, where it says how much they would pay you to bring in these games. And they'll pay quite a penny for some of these, like Spriggan Powered over here is 30,000 yen. Of course they'll sell it for a lot more. Now it wouldn't be a 4am video if we didn't check out the junk corner named Outlet Corner here. Here's Mario Brothers for 300 yen. Fatal Fury, 110 for the Super Nintendo. Exhaust Heat for 100 yen. And this was my favorite find of the day, 300 yen for 1080 snowboarding. This was another game that I didn't have, but my cousin did, so I really enjoyed playing it as a kid. 300 yen, not bad. It had a little tear at the box, but who cares? It's 1080 snowboarding for 300 yen and 64 games all day, all day. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. That was Tachikawa. So I actually did buy that 1080 snowboarding for 300 yen. Can't go wrong with that. I'm pretty happy with my purchases. So what, what a store, man. I'm gonna be going to Surugaya more often. So yeah, if you guys like that video, hit that like button. If you dislike it, hit that dislike button. Don't forget to subscribe and all that good stuff and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.